Oh, a little Glenn Miller. Love that. No, no, that's probably before my time. Um, actually, you know, it's before even my mother's time. She was more of a Elvis girl. Uh, even Johnny Ray was before her time. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was never much of a musically inclined guy in the first place. I, I want to mention my friend Dr. Eric F. Jones, if I could, for just a moment. Uh, Dr. Jones has been a guest on this show. He may come back and join us sometime this fall. He uses a holistic, systemic approach to wellness. And he was fine on the air. It was he, the calls he took, people are so interested in this traditional method of treating different ailments you might have. He's got master's and doctoral degrees in marriage and family therapy. He's been doing this since 1993. Dr. Eric F. Jones uses methods of alternative healing, naturopathy, medicinal herbs, nutrition, sound waves, intellectual cognitive self-regulation, and napathy to help remedy and manage mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual challenges. I was currently accepting new patients and has evening and Saturday appointments available. Number 731-7178. By the way, his, his uh, group on Facebook is known as Eric F. Jones, Ph.D., Mental Health and Wellness Therapy, and that is Eric with a C. Hillary Clinton responded to Donald Trump's remarks. As I said earlier, it's like hearing somebody's fingernails across a blackboard. There wasn't a lot in it for most Americans. He's got... He's got a, he, he, now, he announced a few days ago that he's got a dozen economic advisors. Let's see. He's got three Wall Street money managers, an oil baron, a former chief economist at one of the big banks at the heart of the financial crisis. You know, Democrats used to have people who could speak like, oh, I don't know, John Kennedy, Mario Cuomo, even Jesse Jackson, and today we're relegated to... I, you know, how far the Democrat Party has fallen in some of these situations. It's just it, just a couple of other quick notes about all of this, if I could, because I, I <laughs> one other quick note about this campaign. A Boston University student who's home for the summer, uh, she lives in Massachusetts. Her name is Katie Chekwitz, which means she's uh, she, she's got Eastern European ancestry. She's not a minority by any means. She posted a video of herself stealing Donald Trump signs from people's yards, private property. And then after doing this on Twitter, she got a lot of nasty responses. And uh, she has since pulled down the video, but some people managed to save it. This is her narrating her crime as she was actually doing it. So per Twitter request, uh, I am going to be taking two Trump signs off someone's lawn. Stay tuned. We're rolling up now. I'm gonna pull over really quick. This person is on. That is the sound of her ripping up the signs then. And, uh, and then she put up smiley faces on her tweet and everything else. Since then, she has been getting a lot of what you might call vituperative responses. That is, hate responses, uh, and people being rather nasty. And now she's whining, saying that people are being mean to her because she was a thief. Apparently she doesn't understand that stealing is wrong. Uh, and uh, she's now trying to make amends and says she will pay for the yard signs that she, that she tore out of the yard and then tore to pieces and threw into a trash barrel and filmed herself doing all of that. Uh, but that is your typical Democrat out there, a thief and likely getting a pile of your tax dollars to pay for her education at Boston University. Uh, so just to share that with you this morning. Also, if we get a chance later in the program, Trump was accused last week of throwing a woman out of a rally because her baby was crying. Well, that woman appeared last night on Fox, and that woman says, nothing of the sort happened. She said, Donald Trump was joking with me. And yet, media isn't telling you that part of it. Oh, that mean old Donald Trump doesn't like crying babies. Turns out, he was joking with a woman while it was going on, and she said, I got no problem with Donald Trump, and I'm still voting for him. I'm sure that other than Fox, all of the other media will jump on that story. Steve Millington is in studio with us, and he's going to spend the next half hour with us. I've got about a minute before the break, but just to let people know, in the next half hour, we're going to talk about differences between the people who steal yard signs and Republicans in the next half hour. That's right. We're going to try to identify what makes Republicans different from Democrats. Why are we better and more morally upstanding? Or, or why are Democrats different from Republicans? <laughs> and, and it's an interesting conversation I had with a couple of guys uh, earlier, uh, this, well, in the last week. 
And, and it was some things that I had not thought of previously. And so we're just going to kind of see how that plays out and how far we can go with it. I was going to say, uh, you know, I'm sure that conversation went very well. <laughs> yes. Did you see this story on Drudge where in Cleveland, uh, two guys got into an argument. One guy said, I'm voting for Trunks, uh, Trump. So the second guy went outside, got a pistol and came back and shot the Trump supporter. The Democrat shot him. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, so we're we're dealing with some people out there who have anger management issues. Boy, you got that right. I guess they need more food stamps. They can get more Doritos, and that comfort food will help them out. Yeah, yeah. Get them a bigger Pepsi. Yeah, <laughs> 44 ounces 40, on your yeah, dime. Yep, you got it. <laughs> We've got more with Steve Millington coming up in just a few minutes. Bill Colley as well on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 830. And it's, uh, well, we're at 58, which we'll take. I, it's actually nice to have a little bit of a good sleeping weather uh, in the middle of summer. We'll get to our guest in just a moment. That's Steve Millington. He's in the studio with us this morning until 9 o'clock. He is the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. He's got a lot to talk about with us today. In fact, a big event tomorrow that he'll mention as well. Uh, just a quick reminder to those folks out there who are listening to the program this morning, if you're having difficulty hearing it, and it may not always be my soundboard or me, could actually be your ears. So you need to see Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. With advances in healthcare, people obviously are living longer, healthier lives. But cognitive decline continues to be a major concern. People with hearing loss have a much greater risk of developing that decline, which can lead to dementia. Now, the greater the loss, the greater the risk. Keeping your hearing healthy is an important part of your overall wellness. Knowing your hearing status, doing something about it, can lead to a better, healthier life as you age. Now is the time to schedule a hearing evaluation. You can call the doctor at Mount Harrison Audiology, the number 312-0957. Uh, Steve Millington joining me, Bill Colley, this morning on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 736-0300, the telephone number, 736-0300. So differences between Democrats and Republicans. Other, this, my daughter asked me that question when she was 10 years old. And I said, Republicans on the, basically would like you to keep more of your money. Democrats would like to take more of it and tell you how, how, how you should live while they spend it for you. And then I said to her, which one are you? And she said, I'm a Republican. <laughs> it might have been a little too simplistic, but... Uh, it got the point across. Right, right. <clears throat> and, and, and one of the things, uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, Donald Trump yesterday in uh, Detroit uh, made his first uh, uh, big speech on... Uh, Here's how I'm going to stimulate and, and change and, and motivate the economy. Reduce taxes, bring jobs back, the speech. This morning, um, in watching some of the replays, Hillary Clinton says, well, you know, that doesn't work. Here's what we need. Oh, I've got the hiccups this morning. This is terrible. <laughs> Here's what we need to do. <clears throat> we need You're to have a Democrat come in and frighten you and they'll yes. go away. <laughs> Just the thoughts of the Democrats. And you I'm mentioned Hillary. Hillary. That's pretty yeah, frightening. That was it. <clears throat> we need to take. Uh, we need to spend more money on infrastructure rebuilding. And and uh, a commentator said, "Yep, that's right." The Keynesian liberal uh, Democrats all are of the opinion that all we need to do is spend the money on some project, and it will stimulate the economy and make us everything better. Didn't we try that uh, about six, seven years mm, ago? That's exactly what this guy, he said. You know, we spent, I think the number was like 780 or $90 billion when Obama first came into office. The stimulus uh, had some classy name for it, and I can't think of it now. It was a joke is what it was. But anyway, he said, how does that work for you? Did we get any real economic growth? Was it uh, sustainable? Is it still here? No, it isn't. Because the thing we have to do is figure out how to uh, grow the economy uh, internally without government interference. Well, a lot of that money went to people who were big donors so they could build solar panels, and now they're out of business. Uh, yeah, right. We, uh, uh, I can't remember the name uh, of the one company. Solyndra. Sol thank you. That's the name. Yeah. I think they when they took out bankruptcy, it was like... Uh, 250 or 300 billion dollars that they walked away from wow. yeah we did good on that didn't we <clears throat> so anyway what what are some of the differences in, in, between Republican and Democrat and and uh, after a long conversation and we talked about you know the things like uh, the various issues that we have the, the comparative 
the Republican platform from the National Committee is is multifaceted and has many pages and many subsections in it. The Democrat one, on the other hand, not so much. It's narrowed down very small and very narrow. And, and I said, well, that's because they didn't have anything to say. And he said, no, that's not quite right. If we have 50 million Republicans, we will have 50 million 100,000 individual ideas. If we have 50 million Democrats, we will have five ideas. And the Democrats all coalesce behind these few ideas that they cling to. And he mentioned several that, that are quite obvious, abortion, gun control, illegal immigration, um, uh, tax the rich, destroy the corporations. And they all gather behind that few items. And that becomes the, the, uh, the bulwark of Democrat thinking, very liberal very government-oriented, the government's going to take care of everything, the government can solve all your problems, the government is your buddy and your Just friend. like the IRS or the EPA with the Gold King Mine. Uh, yeah, that's exactly that's right. right. But the Republicans, on the other hand, are more, and he used the term, individuals. And so every one of us has our own list of individual ideas that we want to subscribe to. We, we don't and can't subscribe to the Democrat philosophies and ideologies so we all become republicans but we when we get there we all have our own basic ideas so he said you have a lot of democrats uh, you have one idea you have a lot of republicans you have many ideas that's the individualism the the independence of the republican thinking and we, he says it takes a long time for them to all come together to unify is the new term that everybody wants to cling on to. And he said, that's what we're looking at right more, now. More with Steve Millington coming up. It's 840. It's 54. Bill Colley with you as well on KLIX. I don't think it's cold enough yet for people to turn on the, uh, the heating units in their homes, but we've been reminding people, better to find out sometime in August or September if the heating unit works before you really need it because when it gets cold and you turn it on and nothing happens, um, that's... That's not a good sign. <laughs> so we've been recommending getting in touch with the professionals at Ramsey Heating and Electric today. The team at Ramsey's will make sure it's done right the first time and they'll take care of all those issues to make sure that it works when you need it. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. You can telephone 678-0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. I'm sure it was uh, cold out on the ranch this morning, wasn't it? Uh, it was a little on the chilly side. <clears throat> I, uh, In fact, when I went out the first time this morning and kind of took care of a few things around before I came to town, I come back in the house and I said, mm, if I spend much time out there this morning, I'm going to have to put on a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it went away. It's my favorite time of year when we get into these chilly overnights, but the days are still warm. Yeah, this, you know, uh, we we do have a, the advantage here in in uh, this location, southern Idaho. We, if we have what we refer to as an Indian summer, we will have a lot of these uh, warm summer, uh, warm days, and and the cool evenings. And uh, sometimes I just that it's the best time of the year. Steve <clears throat> Millington is our guest. He's in this. Well, we get football coming up too. That. For me, it makes it even better. I, I, I just, I know what I'm going to do on my Saturday afternoons now for the next several months. It's maybe Sunday. <laughs> Watch a little too. football, huh? Yeah, uh, we have a caller with us, and Stephen Lincoln is our guest. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. Bill Colley with you as well on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 59 at 8:45. Telephone number seven three six zero three hundred. And caller, you're on the air. Good morning. Maybe they're not. Maybe 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 they decided that they. They didn't want to speak to us. I know. There we go. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You know, so, some mornings we have a little bit of a. Ch I we we Bill has a little bit of a challenge finding all the right buttons on because the keyboard. People come in later in the day and move them all around, and then they, they don't change, move them back. They change all the configuration, and you can't. <laughs> okay, caller, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, Steve, I'm concerned that the senators, representatives, with the exception of Pete Nielsen. Um, are not concerned about the safety of our 
citizens in this uh, Magic Valley area, and uh, and also Lee Hyder, by the way. They're the only two that have attended any of the activities. And when Bridget Gabriel came the other night, I sent two emails, sent snail mail out, and called all of them and left messages um, for them to attend. So they had plenty of advance notice. And as far as I know, none of them attended, with the exception of Pete Nielsen, who, of course, was defeated in the in the primary. And uh, Kathy Romer was a county commissioner that came from Jerome. But, you know, Bridget Gabriel brought out a real point. They were all Christian in Lebanon. She's an Arab Christian. And guess what? They were real benevolent to all of the refugees coming in and so forth. Everything was humpy-dory. And then all of a sudden, the Muslims got a majority, and then all of a sudden, they started killing the Christians. And it's been going on and on and on. Same thing's happened every place else. But I'm real concerned, as chairman of the party here, these people need to be come out and find out, instead of the dog and pony show that's, that the, the Times News put on, it was, you know, they all showed up for that. But they were seen, all want to put their head in the sand and uh, deny really knowing what Islam is all about. And true Islam is fundamental Islam is a religion of hate and killing. And uh, they have a world goal of that. And Steve, I'd like you to address that and get on to your people here locally, you know, to really study this issue out. Bridget Gabriel gave a tremendous talk and uh, yet they just boycott it. They boycotted everything. So why is that? And I can, can I follow up on that too, Steve, sure. in my opinion? Going to it doesn't mean you necessarily endorse it. I mean, you've been to some of these yes, events yourself because you just are curious. Going to it doesn't necessarily mean an endorsement. I, I, I think that's a good point. There's a, there's a difference between endorsing a situation and investigating a situation. And and our caller is, is correct that we, we need to be a little bit more um, engaged in, in the process. What is it that we are really facing here? And, and, and this is just kind of a follow-up, a sidebar if you will, to our caller's uh, uh, concern about um, uh, Islam. Uh, there was an article this morning. I want to refer to Dredge Report, I think. Um, and it, is, it was headlined out of Italy. Now, Italy, the, the uh, legislative people in Italy have uh, passed a, uh, a, a bill, a law, which now uh, it makes permissible, acceptable, same-sex marriages. And, and that's really awkward in Italy, the, the headquarters of the Catholic Church, and, and there's been a tremendous amount of, of uh, tension between the, the various elements there in, in Italy. But they passed this bill that permits same-sex marriages. The uh, uh, Italian Islamic Council, and it's got a great big huge acronym, and I cannot remember that for you, I apologize. But anyway, they said, wait a minute, if it is all right, acceptable, legally, for same-sex marriages, and that is their, quote, civil right, unquote, then polygamy is also a civil right. And as Muslims, we demand the right to engage in polygamous marriages. And and it, it just kind of tipped the whole cycle over, being wait a minute, what are you guys talking about? That You can't do that. Wait a minute. If you can have your civil right in this regard, then we should be able to have our civil rights in, in, what are, in, in our right. And, and uh, it, it's uh, heading up through the process and through the legalities and so forth in Italy, but it points out what our caller referenced, and that is they kind of lay back until they reach a point where they have enough influence or control or think that they do, that they can begin to push their agenda. Now, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but as I understand it, um, the Islam, it's four wives. Uh, right, I think four. Uh, something like and you that. And can, you can easily divorce them, too. Yeah. So You may have a limit on that, but it's still fairly I, I, easy I, to get I, a divorce. Yeah, and, and I don't know that, I do know that they can have multiple wives. And, and uh, that obviously is, is not a, a very well accepted around the world. But, but now Islam is pushing that. The Muslim Islamic people are pushing that in, in Italy 
because they said, wait a minute, if these people can have their same-sex marriages, we ought to be able to have our desired marriage, which is polygamy. Here's the thing, though, to follow up on this, and I know a lot of Republicans in this community who tell me off-air, off-the-record, that they're concerned about what's going on with this program. Now, they do feel that they're a little hamstrung because it, you know, it's, it's just— it's, it's independent contractors, and they really don't have a lot of control over this, but they're concerned. But they don't speak about it publicly very often, and that that worries me because, look, I, I know that perhaps they're worried about what some people in media might say, but I can tell you right now from my own perspective, I think my influence is probably minimal. I mean, you know, my ego would like to say it's much more, and I think that the folks at the newspaper would admit the same thing, that, you know, it's not really as much as we'd like it to be. So if they're going to be criticized— I really don't think it's going to have much of an impact. I, and it surprises me that they wouldn't share the concerns publicly and that they would shy away at least from showing up to hear what the woman had to say. Well, and, and part of the showing up thing is that um, and, and I have no frame of reference on this. It's just my, why would they not come? I think that uh, uh, you have the uh, photographers and the reporters uh, showing up to these events looking among other things, to see who's there. We may talk about the subject matter and how it was presented and what occurred, but more importantly, we want to say, well, so-and-so was here and so-and-so was here, or they take a bunch of pictures and we end up with our picture in, in the, in the uh, either the newspaper or the uh, digital version, and, and uh, people say, well, what the heck is this all about? For example... Last spring, when we had the uh, primary election in Idaho, we had a uh, caucus event, the Democrat caucus event. Well, it, uh, to be fair, you, you had the Republicans on on their election night, and you had the Democrats here on their caucus night. Well, as part of that arrangement, um, I went over to the uh, CSI Auditorium, Fine Arts Center, and, and watched the, the Democrat uh, caucus. And, and, and looked at what was going on and the people, and, and uh, there was lots of uh, folks that I knew and knew me, and the question was, what are you doing here? And I said, well, wait a minute. I'm not defecting from the Republicans. That The radio is going to have a, a little broadcast tonight about the, the caucus, and so I'm here as an observer. We'll go back over to the radio station, we'll talk about it, and we'll get some uh, uh, conversation the reporter, the, the the photographer for the newspaper was there, and I, I just called him by name. That We know each other. We've been around enough. I said, come on, don't do that. And he took two or three pictures of me. Well, they didn't, I don't think they put it on the printed media, but they did put it on the digital side. And, and my email went crazy for a couple of days. What are you doing at the Democrat so it, it's just, it just points out that e even though I had a good reason for being there, and, and I like to watch, you know, know your enemy, see what's going on, don't take them for granted, so to watch and, and see what was happening and then come back over here, and we talked about it for a couple of three hours that night. But the fact remains that you're in, in a public position, you're always subject to that exposure. We got two things to do and only a few minutes to do them in. Steve has an announcement about an event tomorrow, yep. but we'll get to a caller first. Caller, make it quick. You're on the air. Uh, good morning. I'll make this real short. Uh, I don't know if he knows or not, but who makes the decision on this debate between Hillary and Trump? I mean, do it during football games. I mean, give me a break. Yeah. I'll take my comment off the air. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, I agree with you 100%. I don't know who scheduled those debates, but the guy obviously doesn't live in the real world. You do not schedule a presidential debate <laughs> on top of a pro football game. What in Especially the world? Especially the Packers. Yeah, what in the world kind of Viking an idiot shirt. would would even consider such a thing? How stupid is that? It just, it just boggles my mind. And and I don't know which, uh, which uh, one of the uh, alphabet stations is going to carry that, but... Uh, you talk about completely stupid. <laughs> that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard in my life. Got about a minute and a half. Okay, and we're going to have a get big... tickets for this picnic? You don't need a ticket. You can just show up. We're going to have a picnic, Twin Falls City Park, 
um, starts at 6 o'clock. Be there just a minute tomorrow or two night. early. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, Twin Falls City Park. We're going to have the typical uh, picnic doings, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, uh, all of the uh, side dishes and desserts. And and, uh, and in addition, we have confirmation of Senator Crapo. Uh, we've got somewhat commitments from several of the state elected officers. Nearly all of our local elected officials are going to be there. County officers, legislative district 23, 24, 25, 26 um, are all going to. 26, by the way, is uh, Blaine, uh, Lincoln, Gooding, Camas County area. They're going to be here as well. So we're going to have, and, and our county, Twin Falls County officials will be here. So we're going to have an opportunity for people to mingle and visit and question, ask questions of the uh, our el- local elected people. And besides, we'll have uh, Senator Crapo here. And we also are going to have Steve Yates, our state party chairman, will will be in attendance also uh, and, and d- discuss, you know, issues with us and, and get an idea of what we need to be doing around here. So um, Twin Falls City Park, 6 o'clock. There is a fee. We're, we're, we're asking $10 per adult or $25 per family. You just uh, will have a, a ticket desk and you just pay as you come in the door. Uh, everything is provided. Um the plates, the forks, the spoons, the water, the sodas, the and a good time. And good people and good fun. And again, you can ask folks questions in a very yes, relaxed setting. Relaxed, and, and, and uh, where there won't be a lot of... Each of them will get just a few minutes to talk about some special issue. Uh, we've definitely allocated time for Senator Crapo, and we've definitely allocated time for Chairman Steve Yates. The rest of them will get a, just a few minutes. Uh, the ones who have challenges will take more. The ones who don't have challenges will just make sure that we know who they are. So come and sit down and visit with us and have a good time. Tomorrow night, Twin Falls City Park. We'll see you in about one week. Yes, we will. Steve Millington uh, joining us this morning, chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party. It's coming up on 9 o'clock. It is 54. Uh, dropped a couple of degrees. Bill Colley with you as well. One more hour of the program still ahead. Speaking of that refugee issue, some thoughts on that coming up in the next hour, uh, as well as a little discussion on the economy, uh, maybe a follow-up to some of Mr. Trump's remarks yesterday. Uh, oddly enough, one of the columnists at the Wall Street Journal, one of the better-known ones who's been opposed to Trump, says Trump just hit on some very good ideas. So maybe there's still time, folks.